Go ahead for lesson two and open up your textbook and then go to the lesson two page. You can also click over here on the bookmarks so we can actually see the full screen of lesson two. So for lesson two, we're going to be talking about variables. So different types of variables. So for lesson two, we're only going to be covering strings, the int, which is an integer, and a double, which is a decimal. So if you think back to when we made Hello World, Hello World was actually a string. So a string is just any sort of letters that you have. So any phrases or just letters, addresses, anything like that would be an example of a string. So like in our previous code, very similar to this, we have our public static void main. Instead of only printing hello cruel world, you could set a string as a variable s and say s is equal to hello cruel world. But you have to establish that s is a string. Let's get an example. Go back into Eclipse and look at what you did for practice one. And while we're here, I am actually going to do a little trick. So come down below your last, your second to last bracket, select everything within your main, control C to copy. And I'm going to close lesson one, go to file, new Java project, or call it lesson two. finish. Go ahead and expand it in the source. Hit a new class. We're going to call it practice 2. Go ahead and click finish. I'm going to reset my bracket. Remember to keep yourself organized for right now. And control V. Paste it all in there. So it's a quick, easy way for us to actually get a code. So go ahead and you can run it and make sure it runs the same way. So 25 divided by five is five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this last line of code and I'm going to say system.out.print s. So now it has an error cannot be resolved to a variable. So we have to set it up as a variable. So we're going to say string s equals whatever you would like it to say. So I'm going to say hello cruel world because that's what our book does. And remember the one thing that you need for every single line is a semicolon. So make sure that that is in there. So now we say string s is going to be hello cruel world and then we're going to print s. So go ahead and run your program and it pops up with hello cruel world. It doesn't seem like a huge thing right now, but it will make your life a lot easier later on. All right, so take a look at your book again. So string is basically a group of letters. Int or integer is going to be a whole number. So basically anything that is an int is going to be a whole number. So say we have like int age is 59 and then you print age. So if you look back in Eclipse, I'm going to call our variable students. Think about variables, you can name them whatever you would like them to be named. So the int students it's angry right now because it knows that this is not an integer. So say we have 450 students and then out print students. Hit the run button and it prints 450. And I want to draw your attention to this line in your book. Commas cannot be used as separators. So you can put underscores as separators. I don't necessarily do that unless it's an extraordinarily large number, but commas cannot be used as separators. So if we look back here and say we had 1,450, we get an error. 
it's saying syntax error on 450, it's an invalid variable because of the comma. So take the comma out. We have no more issues. An underscore, also no issues. So if you run it, it registers an underscore as a comma and just runs it straight. Integers can also be negative. So we are saying that last year we had eight students leave. So we have negative eight students and eight will show up. So integers are your whole numbers, positive or negative. And the last variable declaration that we're going to talk about for this lesson at least is the double. So a double is kind of like a floating point number. So basically it means it's either a decimal or a fraction. Um, it stands for double precision. So if you go into back into your Eclipse, int students had to be eight. So I'm going to delete the negative and I'm going to say double and we're going to say cost. Most things don't cost exactly eight dollars. Maybe it costs eight fifty. We're going to print cost. I'll point out to you. So if I put cost in quotes here, and I run my program, it prints cost. If you want to return the variable, you take off the quotes. So now it's going to give us what cost is, which is eight fifty not cost itself. So if you run it, it's 8.5. So double will cut off that last zero. So if it was 8.52. So one thing I want to emphasize is a couple of words that you need to know from this lesson. So the two words that you need to focus on are declaring and initializing. So basically when we said like double x equals 1.6, we're doing two things. Basically, you declare x to be a double and you initialize x to be 1.6. So these can actually be written in two different lines. So instead of saying that double cost is, is 8.52, I'm just going to copy this and say double cost here. So right here we are declaring cost to be a double. You can come down a line and say that cost equals 8.52. Again, you may think this is an extra step, but sometimes in the future it'll actually come in really handy. So I want you to focus on declaring things as double, int, or string, and initializing their value. And if you run it, it'll give you the exact same result you had before. So I want you to come in on your double line. And after this line, I want you to put in a comment. So your comment, I'm going to say this is declaring, because that's what we're doing here. And a comment here that is initializing. Okay, and I'm also, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some comments up at the top so I know what I'm doing. And here's a little shortcut for your comment. So everything after this first comment, if you put in a backslash and the asterisk, everything in between that and when you end it is going to be a comment. So I just pressed enter and it showed up with an automatic comment box. I'm going to go back up here and say author me and my date put in blue jay lesson sorry not blue jay blue pelican java lesson two and then we're going to say variables declaring and initializing. Don't forget to hit save. All right, so let's go over some things that are legal and illegal in Java for your variables. So 
We have cost set to 8.2 here. Let's change it to an int. Now, as you know, an int has to be a whole number. It's going to give you an issue because you have an int that's set to a decimal. So if you hit run, it's not going to run. It doesn't even like that. It's not going to let you have it. it. Cannot convert from double to int. So it cannot convert this decimal to an integer. So that is illegal. Now, if we had a double cost and cost is just eight, and we run it, it's totally fine. But you notice that it puts a point zero at the end of it. So you can use an int as a double, but you cannot use a double as an int. So at this point, it's just easier to remember use int when you use integers and use double when you use other things. You can even use double to help you out with scientific notation. So let's see, we have double half-life, double half-life. All right, and we make it 1.52 10 to the 20th power. All right, if I hit run, proceed, it doesn't like it, something's wrong. So I set my, in, my double up here as half-life, and here is half-life, but I capitalized the L. So you have to be sure that capitals are important. Also, we have a half-life here, a half-light here, and we're printing cost. So make sure that you change all of your life, or all of your, sorry, I just typed that at the same time, that you change all of your variables at the same time. You usually won't have to change your variables. But now look, you can use a double to actually print yourself scientific notation. Mrs. Anchor would be so proud. All right, so if you look in your book, we do some rules for variable names. So you have some legal names and some illegal names. So basically, illegal names are names that are all numbers, but you can have ones that start with letters and then have numbers on them. So like, you can have student one equals, student two equals, but you couldn't just have one, two, three, four, five. You also can't start with a number or have a space. Um, you cannot have a decimal. The only punctuation that is allowed in your variable naming is an underscore. So keep that in mind. So with that being said, we do have some conventions for actually naming things, especially if you put two names in them. So lowercase first word, and then uppercase the second word with no spaces, or you can use an underscore as a space instead for naming yourself. Uh, if you look at Appendix A, we also have some reserve words that can't be used, so like you can't set class as a variable because we set up classes to run in Java from the very beginning. So basically, here's Appendix A with all of the words that you cannot use as your variables. There's not a whole lot of them. Most of them you'll be able to avoid. So I wouldn't worry about it and name your variables as descriptively as possible as you name them. So I know that the stuff that we covered in lesson two is a little bit more difficult than from lesson one, but on Moodle, there's some questions for you to go through and answer. You can use this book to help you answer them if you need to. You can use a forum to help each other figure out the answers. So. Good luck.